I am very excited now to introduce you to our next guest. You're going to learn a lot. Her name is Babel Katz. She has a very interesting background, born in Argentina, moved to the United States in 83 and became a very successful accountant and business consultant and tax advisor. In 97, she started her own business and that did very, very, very well. And it turned into a radio show and a television show called the Mabel Katz Show. And it was sort of like Oprah and Susie Orman and Rachel Ray all combined. And she became known as the Latino Oprah Winfrey, won tons of national awards, even international awards. This is so amazing. She was awarded dame status, like, you know, uh, knight status as well, and continued on. She discovered, though, that there was something else she wanted to study, and she has been one of the leading teachers and knowledge uh, bearers for Ho'oponopono, which is an ancient Hawaiian art that we're going to learn about that could really help your business. You don't see how yet, but you will in a minute. Dame Mabel Katz, welcome to the show. How are you doing? How are you, Jim? Great to be here with you. Thank you. Thank you. Did I say it right? Ho ho pono pono. You said it perfectly. Awesome. We, I actually <laughs> used to live in Hawaii. Okay. So, so I've run across this before. Explain to the audience what it is, please. Yes, it's a very ancient Hawaiian art of problem solving that says that we are 100% responsible, that everything that we experience is actually the monitor that is showing us the program that are downloaded in our subconscious mind. So people confuse you know, responsibility with guilt, but it has nothing to do with that. It has to do that if you create it, you can change it, so that everything is inside you. And when you change, everything changes. So how is it difference between responsibility and guilt? Uh, what's the difference between those two words? When you are responsible, you take back control. You, you have the power to change it. When you, and when you feel guilty uh, or you, you blame somebody, you know, you are depending on that. Yes, it's something that is completely out of your control, that you cannot fix, that you are depending on something or somebody. So at least I, when I realized I was 100% responsible, I felt free for the first time in my life. Really, that's what I told myself. Oh, I created it. I can change it. And I really felt free and powerful for the first time in my life. But on the other hand, today's culture says that it's someone else's fault. Probably our parents. Our parents screwed us all up. And yes. we I, always blame yes. somebody else. It's not my fault. Yes. He did it. Exactly. And you know what? Um, my uh, spiritual journey, I found uh, that there was a lot of drama, that everybody was just looking to see who they could blame. But then you are powerless, yes? And again, like I said, you are dependent on somebody. So um, that really doesn't work. And there is a time, especially the times that we are living now, that is imperative that we take responsibility if we want to see changes. Because, again, the changes start with us. Peace, you know, begins with us. When we are going to be at peace, then the world will be at peace. All right. What a hopeful thought. Is there a process that is included in this idea, the ho ho pono pono? Is there actual well, steps? Well, there are, it's not like a steps, but it's a 24 hour uh, process that you do so that you can, you know how people meditate, you know, to yes. get to certain levels and things like that, how you notice your thoughts, but you don't engage with them. Ho'oponopono for me is a 24 hour meditation. So the idea is how not to engage, how not to react, how you can become an observer you know, moment by moment, because the problem is not the problem, but how we react to the problem is the problem. So the idea is that you become an observer and you work on your reaction to things. Yes, so you could be at peace even, you know, if a lot of things are happening around you. So you don't depend on anything or anybody outside of yourself to be happy or to be at peace. 
All right, but how do you maintain that peace when your okay. business is going bankrupt? Yeah, so you have to realize you are not alone, and there is a part of you that has all the solutions to all your problems. The only thing is right now you are listening to the part of you that thinks it knows, your intellect. So when you stop that part, yeah, and in Ho'oponopono we do it by saying thank you or I love you mentally, you are coming back to present. You are coming back, you are in balance. You are connected to the source, to divinity, to nature, the universe, whatever you want to call it, but definitely a more intelligent mind than yours. And what happened is that you find solutions where you never thought possible. The ideas, people start calling you, uh, again, with the solutions or uh, the perfect business idea or things like that. And you didn't have to do much. You just had to let go. You had to stop, you know, the, the, the chattering, you know. You have to, to stop the videos that you watch yourself because it's all about what you tell yourself, your conversations. That's very true. But if I am 100% responsible and my business is going bankrupt because of the pandemic, I don't think I'm responsible for my business going bankrupt. But you can find the so amazing solutions. Miracles could really happen when you let go and trust. So that's what we do. Because what happened is this. This pandemic is triggering things for you, yes? But there are memories in your subconscious mind. Or maybe you are engaging or buying the fear. Yeah, The pandemic is about fear. It's not about the virus. So when you do that, if you say thank you or I love you, to the, to the fear, to the worries, you come back to present. If you are worried, you are in the future. And you cannot resolve anything there, but you can change it here in the present moment because you decided not to engage, because you didn't buy into the fear. So that's what sets you free. That's when, it's like coming back to being children again. Trusting is very, very important right now. So everybody is living a completely different pandemic right now. You talk to two people, they will not tell you the same thing. Yes? Because we are the ones creating. We are the ones attracting, you know, the solutions or the problems. We are the ones attracting miracles or hell, <laughs> you know? So if, when you let go and trust, for example, in, play, in moments like this, I personally use a lot of, I let go and trust, I let go and trust, I let go and trust. So I don't allow the, the fear, I don't allow the worry to take me places, past, future, and things. So I stay one with the universe. And as you let go and trust, you are giving permission. We all have free choice. And then you cannot believe your life. You know, because, I mean, things start resolving by themselves. And you have what you need when you need it. It really works. I mean, remember, I come from the tax world, <laughs> you know, the business <laughs> world, and, and I changed careers for something that I don't have even a title. And everything, you know, I've been traveling the world nonstop till the pandemic stopped, stopped me. And, and everything is because of an email, nothing that I plan, nothing that I set goals, nothing that I visualize or imagine. It just happens. I am a self-published author. And I sold the the copyrights of my books in almost 20 languages, all, all by emails that I received. So there is, we are not alone. That's the most important thing that we have to know, that God is in the plan too. And I want you to know that I was not a believer at all. I didn't believe in anything I could see or touch. But becoming a believer, and I'll tell you what God means to me. God means to me uh, another part of me. It is inside of me. It is, again, the part of, of me that knows and that has all the solutions and has all the answers to my questions. But I have to give permission for that part to communicate, to enter into my life, to guide me, to protect me. When you say, say Mabel, when you say that we need to trust, who do yes. we trust? Do we tr uh, say we're talking about the pandemic, and you say let go and trust. Who yes. do you trust so, in the pandemic? Well, I trust God. God, yes, okay. But again, it could be. But again, it could be different for everybody. I I just want you to know that I believe in God when I started believing in myself, and that's when I found it inside of me. 
I right. realize you, the worst part in a of me. Christian God, a is it is it just God? It, Yahweh, just one, B- Buddha, Mohammed. There is one, only one. The only one. We are all family. We all have the same father. Well, I agree about that. That's obvious. You know, they, you know what happened, Jim. People confuses spirituality with with a religion it has nothing to do with it. Yeah, because religion separates, divides, um, uh, creates wars. Spirituality unites. The spirituality uh, brings peace. Uh, spirituality makes us all family. It's very different. When you said that things that happen, I didn't understand this, are memories in our subconscious mind. Yes. Please explain that. Yeah, they, yes. So we, we've been accumulating. The, have you noticed that in the same family, not all the kids are, act the same, think the same? I have four children, Mabel. Yeah, so you know that. Oh, God, yes. yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. So how could you explain that? Same parents, same messages, same examples, yes? We all have free choice. So you can tell the same thing to your four children, and they, not all of them will buy it. Not of, all of them will interpret, interpret it the same way. They will react the same way or things because of that free choice. So that's where 100% responsibility plays, too. I am creating. I'm the one believing. You know, I'm the one buying you know, the pandemic or no pandemic. I am creating my own reality. And that's the most important concept what we need to realize. So yeah? does your so, reality include wearing a mask and doing the other things they tell us to do? Ex- exactly. Not everybody's buying into that, yes? Or buying into the news or the numbers they give you or whatever. So, but some people, like I told you before, the pandemic is more about fear. Because fear uh, is the only weakness we have, yes? And that's what attracts, and that lowers your immune system, too. So we are deciding moment by moment again. So what are those memories accumulated? There could be beliefs, yeah? Maybe something that happened to you when you were a child, and you bought it into, you know, and now you keep attracting, you keep replaying, yeah? You keep attracting the same situations, the same kind of people, the same kind of challenges. So that's where our 100% responsibility. Now, for people that believe in uh, reincarnation, most of our memories come from other lifetimes. It has nothing to do with what is happening now. So that's another <laughs> way of seeing it. Okay. That one I don't know that I agree with. Okay. No, you don't have to. Yeah. But going back to the trusting, I want you to know, again, me coming from a very intellectual world and, you know, finding a spirituality and then finding the balance, yes? Because yes. Then always you have to have balance. There is no, you know, being too spiritual doesn't work either, <laughs> yes? So, um, and I, because I still am a business person, yeah? And that's how I think also, uh, how I was trained. But when I started trusting myself, I'll tell you the changes, big changes in my life that helped me, yes, with all, all, all this, the transformation. Uh, first of all, I stopped, um, well, let's say that I realized that what I think of myself is important, not what other people think of me, yeah, is important. So I live for, you know, pleasing people. For me, everybody had to like me. That's a lot of wasted energy. And you're still not happy, okay? The other thing that helped me a lot was to realize that if you don't forgive, not only you are, you, you st- you are stuck in the past and you are kind of living, you know, moment by moment with that person that you hate so much, but that really you are hurting yourself, yes? And you are closing doors for yourself because of not forgiving, so those things really were very important uh, for me to change. The other thing is to, to that when I let go and trust, I was not planning to leave my career because I, I had a very profitable and stable career as an accountant, uh, both in Argentina, where I'm from, and here in the U.S. So why would I leave that? Because I started letting go and trusting and allowing, you know, the flow to take me. 
um, I, I allow the universe to guide me. So it, it has a lot to do with trusting ourselves, with being ourselves. The best advice I, I received uh, from a teacher that I had um, was, you just have to be yourself. Because when I realized I was going to be a public speaker, I thought I, I'm going to take classes. Yes, I'm an accountant. And he told me, no, that will take all your naturality. All you have to be is yourself. And I think that's the best advice I received in this lifetime. Well, there's some great pictures just on your, your profile of you in front of some huge audiences with everyone going crazy and having a good time. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So I would love to see you speak and uh, to hear uh, one of your messages. Thank you. Uh, Thank can you, you. You've already sort of mentioned this. Can you talk a little bit about gratefulness and on the other side of the coin, forgiveness as yes. key yes. concepts to yes. everything we're talking about? Gratefulness and forgiveness, yes. please. Yeah, gratefulness is very important. For example, I want you to know, when we use thank you in Ho'oponopono, we don't do it from that point of view. It's not like we need to feel grateful or anything like that. Thank you or I love you in Ho'oponopono is like the delete key in your keyboard. You know? Instead of talking to monitors, you just press the delete key. Yeah, What is it in me that is that this shows up in the monitor? Uh, but being grateful that raises your vibration immediately. So let's say that you are going bankrupt or that you've been fired or something like that. If you don't go into the blame, if you don't go into the worry or things like that, and you go into the gratefulness, like, for example, there is always a blessing behind. So if you don't go into, again, the blame or the complaint, other doors will open up for you really fast. But the thing is, we go into the complain, we go into calling people, you know, telling them about it, how unfair, how unlucky, how you are a victim and things like that. And you close the doors for yourself. Okay. So in that moment, you can think of all the things I can be grateful for. Well, maybe I have more time for myself now, or I can spend more time with my family. I don't know what, what it could be, but I'm sure you can find or that you didn't get contagious, yes, that you didn't uh -huh. get the, get the COVID or something. You always can find things to be grateful for. Remember, we talk about we are energy, we are vibration, and you are attracting based on that. That's why when you are into the fear, you have more possibilities of getting, you know, a virus, okay, or getting sick. So what happens is when you are grateful, when you go into that state, you already are in positive. There is no way you can catch a virus when you you are in that uh, vibrating at the, you know, the being grateful state. Yeah. So only also when you let go, when you let go, you go to neutral. You go to balance. Yeah. So you have when you commit to say, okay, I'm gonna take 100% responsibility. Maybe, maybe there is something inside of me. You go into the positive already. So it is up to us to stay in the positive. We, it is up to us to to keep our vibration high. And then we don't have to worry about anything because everything starts coming to us, you know, effortlessly. But we learned the other way around. Yes, we had to work for the money. Life was hard, you know, was unfair. And, and we bought into that. Those are the programs that are now showing in the monitor. Because we are always right. <laughs> if we say we can, we can. And if you say we cannot, we cannot. The forgiveness part is a little bit of what I already mentioned. Um, I heard something that for me is perfect. It says that when you don't forgive, it's like taking poison every day, waiting for the other one to die. Oh, my God, and that's good. That's so yeah, good. Yeah, so... Yeah, so, I mean, you are hurting yourself. You're not hurting the the person that doesn't deserve your forgiveness. Mabel? So, he, he, yes. My brother and I are fighting over money. Okay. I am so mad at him. He has been so, just a little jerk. Okay. And he has no idea. And it is killing me and me alone. He is hurting you. 
That's what well, he says. I'm yeah, sorry. But no, what I'm saying is exactly what you're right. Not forgiving him is a daily poison. For- exactly. Exactly. So, you know and what? It's not daily. It's almost every hour. Yeah. You know what, Jim? B- believe me, <laughs> there is a judge, in the universal judge. Everything comes back. What you have to know in your heart is that if this is really not right, what he's doing, don't worry because you will have more coming from other places for you. You understand what I mean? Because this is what also gave me a lot of peace of mind. Everything comes back. Do not worry. I mean, you don't have to be the sorrow, you know, the uh, the justice uh, guy, you know, um, imparting justice around. Uh, just let go and trust. Believe me, you will never believe, but other doors will open for you if you really let go. And you accept that everything is the way it has to be. Maybe, again, you didn't believe me, but I'm going to say it anyway. Maybe you were together in another lifetime and, you know, and you're paying some debts, you know. But it's not because you are bad. It's because this is an opportunity to set yourself free. Because we come to, to make amends, to correct. Mabel, how do we find out more about you, follow you online, get copies of your writings, all of the above? Okay, so I in Facebook, I am Mabel Katz. Actually, my, my name is Mabel, but I respond to Mabel, too. But it's M-A-B-E-L, Mabel Katz, a, a fan page. And then Instagram is Mabel Katz, Twitter, you know, LinkedIn. And um, if you go to zerofrequency.com forward slash book, there you will see the instructions. So when you get the book, the my latest book, Zero Frequency, um, you receive $100 in bonuses, digital, some amazing trainings, one with one Zero Frequency with my teacher, Dr. Ijalia Calakiolen, and then another training we did in Los Angeles with Don Miguel Ruiz, DC Cordova, Gary Quinn, and others. Great information, great for business. Um, great for finding ideas, inspirations, you know. Right now is the time to get out of our comfort zone, yes, to feel the fear and do it anyway. I agree 100%. And I just, you're awesome, Abel. I'm sorry if I was mispronouncing your name right. I just looked at it and go, oh, there's a name I know. And so I had it wrong. <laughs> no problem. What part no of problem. Argentina are you from? Buenos Aires? Buenos or? Aires. Okay. Buenos Aires, yes. That is one of my three most favorite places in the world. My favorite bar in the world is in Buenos Aires. Uh, I've had some great times there. It's a beautiful place. Wonderful. Yeah, it is a a fun place. It is. It is. Not to leave, but to visit is great. (laughs) Yes, exactly. To visit Ricoleta is awesome. I don't know that I would want uh, (laughs) want the economic problem. I'm Puerto Madero. Oh, yes. Yes. (laughs) All right. Thank Thank you so much for your time. Great, great conversation. 